It's that dreaded time again. That's right. We're checking in on the progress of Skynet once more as we have returned for another AI Easy game, this time against Jordan. Jordan, who... He's doing okay, but he's not doing that great right now. He slipped out of the top 200 on the ELO leaderboards, down at 215 right now, about 150 games played. So not having the best of times. And I don't know if he's going to have a great time here either, guys, because although this is an easy AI, you'd be like, oh, that's simple. It literally has easy in the top. I can beat it like it's nothing. Well, easy AI don't go down that easily. We just saw Marine Lord lose to easy AI. And the question is now on. Is the AI in Age of Empires 4 so advanced that it can beat the greatest players in the game right now on the lowest difficulty? Well, I think that was someone that was bragged about in the early days of production. People said that there was going to be this amazing AI. And although it's taken a month, it started to appear. And let's see if Jordan is going to be able to overwhelm it. We have seemingly a switch of uh, nothing, really, as... The Marine Lord game did feature Mongols versus Rus, and we're going to get that again. It seems the easy AI is learning frequently on Mongols, but only Mongols. And it does make it seem a little bit cheesy, but what do you expect if it's an easy mode? You know, I'm pretty sure if we had uh, AI hard, then we'd probably be getting like HRE right up in that kind of territory. But if you're easy AI, you, you don't have to make it complicated for yourself. You take the, the cheesy Mongols, which is what he's doing. No ultra cheesy strats so far. Just really good timings and really punishing what we've seen Roost players do a lot at the moment, which is this greedy as all oh, hell tech up rush where they don't build a single military unit. Uh, let's see if that's going to be a similar downfall for Jordan or if Jordan's going to be more present in the feudal age because we do know already that this easy AI likes to rush Russ. And also still likes to let people take all of the deer. It's happening again, folks. Jordan is going to get plenty of bounty. And I'm honestly starting to wonder if the AI has learned that it wins because it lets people do this. Because the, now this that sounds crazy. Hear me out, though, folks. Hear me out. If you were a Roost player and you get to snipe your deer and you get to snipe your opponent's deer and it just all gets left there and the easy AI never bothers to take any of that gold away from you and you sit there and you go, I got 400 gold. Holy hell. What do you say? Do you say, I'm going to invest this in uh, in a, a fun one night, which is going for, as in like one night stand type thing, no go out for a pie, but literally in game terms is, I will invest in nights. Or do you say, you know what? I actually, you know, I want a future. I want to invest in my future. I'm going to put it in a, a diversified portfolio. I'm going to get 20% return per year. That's crazy value. And I am, in a few years, going to be so powerful. And that equivalent in game is going, me like tech, zug zug, me go up fast. Right? Like awkward erections. That's exactly what I think is going to happen here. It's genuinely just handing the rope to these players so they can hang themselves. As Jordan is just going to be allowed to freely collect all of the deers. The only reason these aren't in his pocket is because he hasn't spotted them out yet. And you just saw it. I mean, AI easy. He snipes out a wolf. Well played to him. But for the most, just lets his opponent have what he wants. As Jordan now up at almost 300 bounty at the pre-four minutes, which we saw similar from Marine Lord. In fact, even better from Marine Lord. I've got a feeling we're going to see a greedy tech up. Meanwhile, in the base of Easy, Easy almost done with that deer stone. And then we'll probably see some military infrastructure that Uvu has already been ready for a while, just milking all that stone. And I wonder if he's going to do the Archer spam again. It's pretty effective, especially with the maneuver bonuses the Khan gives, right? You can just get in, snipe out a line. You can stay on top of your opponents so they can't retreat. Wood of Fortress is going to go down again from a Roost player to defend that wood line, as we've already seen before. Not as much needed as it was in the last game, to be honest, though. And the Khan... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, that would have been pain if you'd lost him there. Maybe screws your timing a bit, but you keep him alive. And Easy beats Jordan to the Feudal Age. So, a little bit delayed here on the Golden Gate being complete. But we said, like, especially when you want to do these greedy tech ops as Roost, where you don't even have any military presence, Golden Gate almost just is a prerequisite, but it's not only a prerequisite, it feels like it's a double downer. It, it tempts you, right? It's the dark side trying to lure you in. It's like, oh, I could get it quicker because I could, I could trade my wood. 
And I could get the gold required. Oh, and I'm still hunting. Mm, tempted. But Jordan, he will not fall to that temptation, though. Look at this. Double archer range drop. But AI easy. You know why AI is powerful? Because it understands the power of scouting. It gets that info. Not that it would need it. It's just an illusion, guys. Because this is an AI, it already sees everything. It has to see everything. It knew you were building these things. But for the sake of looking fair, it's Khan will scout out that you built these archery ranges. And that will allow an in-kind response out of easy. Is it going to be the continued spam? It is. So he's committed to the archer range. He can match his opponent, remember, because he's got the Uvu doubling up. Right? You can see it here. Uh, and that's why Jordan went for double archery range, by the way. Is he's expecting his opponent to be spamming out two of one unit. And he hasn't seen Spearman yet. Usually if we see a Spearman rush out of Mongols, Spear's are already in your base by now. We haven't seen that at all. So he just anticipates that there are going to be archers coming to his base. So really well read by Jordan. And still, his eco lines are fairly well protected. So he should just be able to prioritize the big fight. It's just a matter of whether he can get enough troops out. He's already behind in count. And you can see the power of the, the Deer Stone, right? The Yamaning is occurring as they run across this map so quickly at 1.44 movement speed per tiles. I mean, that's barely slower than Knights at that stage, right? Knights are 1.62 for reference. So you see that comparative. It's pretty nutty. And you know, Jordan hasn't scouted out the force coming in just yet. I mean, he's wrapping with the... Oh, hello. Can he actually pinch this? It looks like the Khan's going to back away in time. His idea was to try and force him into the scouts so the scouts can finish off after the archers hit into him, but unable to do so. And when he drags away, look what he does! AI Easy tries to sneak in to scout out and snipe out some units. Unable to do so, though, so he'll have to back off. A nice idea, though, as soon as he sees the forced response out of Jordan, he wants to try and milk that. The problem is that the wood line, as we've seen from a lot of players at the moment, they, they even start to micro to the extent where they don't reveal, right? We've seen them kind of funnel in, really, where they've got this protected line on the outskirts from the wood. Uh, not fully intended. You can see Jordan's going back for this side now, but... It's definitely a detail I've noticed some players are doing, and it's not just automatic behavior out of the villagers. It does seem like it's occasionally they're just reallocating their villagers so that they don't have to worry about exposing an eco line through gathering resources too fast. So archers and archers. 10 past the 12, so Jordan will not win this out. I say that, he has got the armor resistance, right? Because he built the blacksmith. And that's something that AI Easy hasn't got yet. He's going up for it now, so... Now that he has the info on what his opponent's doing, going for the Iron Undermesh. Neither of them prioritizing the balanced projectiles instead. Actually, I say that. He did go for the balanced projectiles and did... No. So Jordan is more tanky, but he doesn't fire out as hard. And he's about to lose on both fronts because AI Easy did get the damage and is about to have the armor. Uh, is the tech being done? Yes. No, 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 it's not. He's going for Siege Engineering. What? This is very surprising out of Jordan. I feel like this is a mistake, right? All you have to do is quickly click on your opponent to see what the numbers are and know you're now at disadvantage. And you see it coming into effect as well. If you wondered why or if the blacksmith upgrades really make that much of a difference, you can see it here. Like you're in the home field and you're still losing out like this. And yeah, we can talk about the fast right, the attack speed arrows, maneuver arrows, but definitely a big chunk of this does come down to the extra armor, the extra damage, because it means you're spending an extra volley, for example, on uh, each archer in some cases, and it's just wasted micro efforts at that point, right? Because you're not splitting up to shoot into different groups. So he'll back away. Definitely got the better side of that trade. Income per minute is still good for Jordan, though. You can see his wood is kind of crazy. He's suffering on the gold, but that's because he keeps selling uh, the wood for gold, right? That's that's why he doesn't care about gold veins at all. And understandably, he shouldn't in this situation. Like, he kind of got screwed a little bit in that regard, right? Both these gold veins pushing towards your opponent is a bit tough to defend. It's exposed eco right in the front. Meanwhile, when you look at the comparative in Easy's base, he's got this gold vein off the side, a little bit more safe. He even had, I think, a backup option. Yeah, really far out, but he definitely feels less uh, exposed, should we say, even though he's got two gold veins here as well. It's the fact that Jordan doesn't have any gold veins behind him, except this one very far back and off. Nice move to get the hunting cabins down, by the way. It does mean he's got exposed economy again, though. Talked about how risky this is against factions like the Mongols, the French, and Rusa are especially one of these civs that suffer from this, right? It's why we see most high-level players, they opt to go into professional scouts, which Jordan didn't do, by the way, and then they gather under their own their own protection of the TC. The reason is because these, these wooden fortresses are way too expensive. 175 wood, yes, it's more you know, tanky, yes, it can feel and, you know, protect more people inside, eight instead of the five, but 
in the other game, when you're limp five woods, it's wonky to justify, right? If we compared it to easy, if easy needed to put down outposts, it's 100 each, or 70, sorry, uh, 70 each, right? That's a huge difference. And I think wooden fortresses might end up getting tweaked for the better for Roos, because right now, while they seem like they're very strong, the idea of gathering more wood is really great. Uh, it's a very hard balance building into these in the early game. And I think that's where the weakness needs to be addressed. In the mid like in the mid game, great, right? To boost your wood lines, to protect your expansions, you have plenty of wood. But in the early game, especially, it's painful to try and get those out. Archer and Archer engagement. Advantage is there for easy, but he doesn't have the attack speed arrow just yet. However, he does seem to have the superior micro as he's split onto two different targets. 16 to the 13. He's keeping that number advantage over Jordan right now. Jordan. Oh, he still hasn't got the damage buff. What? Wow. Okay, so he's just going to lose the army again. Jordan's seemingly not learning his lesson each time here. As yes, you're triggering out uh, uh, these archers, but remember your opponent is as well, and he has the yam speed buff, so they're coming out quickly. And that means, once again, Jordan takes a bad trade. And the slurp forces are going to start to fall as they retreat. Jordan being beaten by the easy AI. I mean, this thing has learned a lot. I think easy AI has played like, what, how many games was it? Maybe 40, I want to say, if that. 43 games. But damn, does it learn fast. And he's definitely learned how to exploit mistakes. This wooden fortress is going to be a fail from Jordan. Movement speed can chase down the archers now. And that's going to be a third archery range drop now for Jordan. He should have the sustained income to support this. But it does mean he's sacrificing the ability to tech up anytime soon. An archer and archer count still in favor of easy AI. Jordan, it's not just about winning for that rank. It's not just about the ELO score. It's about the honor, the pride of protecting your name against easy AI. He doesn't want to lose like that. But he's failing to gain ground, let's put it that way. As once again, as he starts to even up the trades and put the numbers even with AI Easy's number of archers, reinforcements do arrive for the Mongol player. And with a line formation, he'll be able to harass and chase down a lot of targets here. And the eco line is now exposed. Wooden Fortress, that's way too late. That's way too delayed. Which means he's going to lose several of these villagers. And you can see the prioritization. Although the Khan goes down, Easy, he doesn't even care about trading out the archer army. He cares about trading for economy. And he's finding that value right here, as almost all the villagers building the Wooden Fortress are dead. And yeah, now he can just focus on trying to get out or take a few more archers with him. But damage done. Easy AI up now, but 43 to the 27 village account of Jordan. And that is going to become quite impactful because that means that Jordan is going to be stuck in Tech 2. And you can already see by the numbers that Easy, while he's still fielding a military force, is getting ready and prepped to Tech up to Castle Age. Oh my god. Did he bait him out? He did! Well, luckily for Jordan, I mean, most of his villagers are dead, right? So there's not, there's not that much left on this, this tree line to expose. They're more clustered into the wooden fortress now. But that could have been fatal. Easy snuck in a secondary force to start harassing the economy lines again. And if he had actually seen and reached one of these berry bushes, probably would have lost like three, four more workers. And at that stage, Jordan's going to be almost doubled up on the village account. Scouts. Oh. I like how they drop the, they actually just drop the deer carcass and leave it as tribute for Jordan. Please, let us live. The answer is no. As the remaining Mongol arch will be chased down, but reinforcements now arrive. And I'll start to focus down targets here. Jordan. Well, he does have the number advantage, but he's far away from home. And he's trickling in a new force. But look at this. Easy can go for his base as well if he wants to. The tech up, has he gone for it? No, it looks like he's doubled down the archers at the moment, so he needs to rebuild a force. But he's very close to being able to just go straight for the Castle Age. And enough archers arrive in the northern fight that Jordan's going to lose this now. So instead, he pivots his force towards the, the, the tree-killing in of archers around the center. But a little bit late to snipe them out. He can start to get the additional ones, and easy AI. I'm starting to doubt that this guy is actually a bot. I feel like a robot, even on the easy set, would have immediately noticed and done something about this. But he does. He goes in for the trade again. So Jordan, now with a pin to attack, has the number advantage. But look, the tech up has begun. And it is going to be the step readout, as we see so often out of these Mongol players. And Jordan, Jordan nowhere near ready for a tech up. Look, he's drained to the bone. He's barely able to keep this up in terms of output of archers. And you can feel it as well, as his archers have started to lose out now. 
The Khan respawns. More archers are treating him for easy AI. Barely any left for Jordan. Jordan count is now 32 villages to the 50. And I feel like we're heading to a stage where as soon as you see the castle age ping, you might just be too demoralized to continue, right? Like, you're at least keeping yourself in this game with this food gathering in the south. I still feel like big mistakes made by Jordan never to have gone for the professional scouts, by the way. Like, considering he's behind on the eco count, like, village account, it, it feels really haphazard and silly to have not gone for professional scouts to keep everything centralized. Think about the lost time of these villagers running out here to get these carcasses. And then think about the additional lost time of when they have to run somewhere else, when they get reallocated, right? Same for the north as well. And scouts would have solved this. Scouts that you had in the early game because you're Roos, you build multiple scouts anyway. But it's kind of baffling that the player who ended up getting the value out of these scouts wasn't even the Roos player. Like, it's the Mongol player who went and head and actually got that very important research that we see so often. You can see, actually, it was the only one he bobbed to get was the professional scouts. So, easy AI. Learning plenty of tricks from other games. And when the Castle Age hits, Jordan... Oh, he's facing his hands. He's sighing. He's shaking in disbelief because Jordan AoE has lost to Easy AI.